On this episode of Forgotten Rails, the Connecticut Trolley Museum. We are the nation's oldest incorporated organization dedicated to the preservation of the trolley era. Since railroads were introduced to the United States, thousands of lines have been built. And while some are alive and going strong, others have long since disappeared. I'm your host, Timothy W. Lawrence. Along with my sidekick, Ares the Siberian Husky, we're going to search the nation, exploring and sharing the history of these rails. Whether abandoned, exempt, or currently active, if there's a history, we'll find it. So hop on up, because it's all aboard for Forgotten Rails. These days, most people take for granted the fact that you can hop on a train and in a matter of minutes or hours, be in a different town, state, or even time zone. But it wasn't always this way. Before there were larger transit systems available, many smaller towns bonded together and built trolley lines. And while most cities and towns have long since done away with their trolley lines and torn up the tracks, or in the case of the Springfield Electric Railway, turned it into a rail trail, you can still find some locations and museums which house these trolleys. Our next stop brings us to the Connecticut Trolley Museum. Located conveniently off of Route 140 in East Windsor, Connecticut, this 17-acre facility boasts some of the greatest trolleys around. In 1940, we became the first uh, incorporated organization in all of the United States to preserve trolleys. That's when the three gentlemen got together and decided that they wanted to preserve the trolley era. Um, so in 1940, they incorporated as the Connecticut Electric Railway Association and they purchased 17 acres on the main campus here and then three miles of right-of-way for the very, very low price of $300. Three miles of right-of-way that was left open, uh, completely void of anything. The track was gone, the overhead, the poles, everything was all gone. And slowly but surely, um, we've reconstructed a mile and a half so far of that uh, three-mile uh, right-of-way purchase. It was a branch line that ran from Warehouse Point uh, to Rockville, Connecticut. Um, and they were able to uh, purchase that right-of-way um, in the hopes of building a uh, museum for, to save trolley cars. Our claim to fame, in a sense, is we are the nation's oldest incorporated organization dedicated to the preservation of the trolley era. Trolley cars are very important to everyday life because back before trolleys ran, the only way you could get around was one, you would either walk, or two, you would take a horse car somewhere. Not only did they haul a lot of people, um, but they were also uh, used for uh, funeral processions. They had cars that were specifically designed to carry the mail. Um, they had cars that were designed as jail cars to transport prisoners from place to place. And at one point in time, you could actually travel across the country on the trolley cars. And trolleys were really the first mass transit system that could get people around quickly and efficiently. Now, when the early trolley cars were starting to get built, they were uh, fashioned very much after the, the uh, coach cars for steam trains. So they had very ornate designs on them, um, and they were just very, very well done. And I guess this is an excellent example of a car for you to look in for that. If you look at the ceiling in this car, you'll actually notice that the entire thing is stenciled with gold leaf around the outside. You know, this is the most restored car we have in the, in the uh, fleet. And uh, basically every little detail of this car was done to look like it rolled out of the factory. So, you said this one is operational. Yep, this one's That's one of the ones that you can come down and ride um, on a regular basis. Nice, and when it's going down the tracks, do you ever get tempted just to be like, <laughs> Well, I'm uh, not gonna comment on that on film. Before I was able to get my tour guide to incriminate himself, he led me to the next set of cars, starting with number 5645, a 1923 city-style car from Boston. Then on to number 451, a later model urban commuter car. These cars could actually run in multiple units and using this coupler, there's a, a lot of little contacts on it. So you connect the two cars and one controller on the front of this car can run a whole train of the same style car. After number 451, it was over to one of only four Montreal Tramways cars that were ever built. Definitely one of the more unique open air cars around. So they would actually use this to give tours of Montreal, and on occasion they would climb Mount Royal with them. Um, 
just giving tours of the city. You'd have a three-person crew, uh, motorman, conductor, and a tour guide speaking both French and English so everyone could understand. <laughs> we are the only crazy people who run it during the winter uh, for our Winterfest program. Um, I heard Santa Claus appears on it. Is that true? He does. This is actually his sleigh. He rents it out. On, <laughs> I knew it. Uh, he doesn't live in the night. North Pole. He lives in Connecticut. That's it. Over the years, the trolley cars evolved from a small horse car that usually featured only two axles to a larger trolley, much like what we're sitting on here, it was built in the 1920s, which featured uh, four axles, and the cars became heavier, they became longer, and uh, of course they required electricity. A car of this size couldn't be pulled by one or two horses in the street. To get this electricity, spring-mounted trolley poles would reach up and make direct contact with exposed copper lines carrying 600 volts. 600 volts on that line, copper wire, comes down the pole and it goes down to the motors. The wheels touching the tracks is what grounds the trolley, completing the circuit. The museum also houses a number of stationary trolleys and rail equipment, ranging from an 1895 model that ran on the Five Mile Beach Electric Railway, to later model high-speed cars, cabooses, old engines, a pump car, and even... <laughs> <laughs> I love this! That is called a velocipede. Um, those were built in the mid to late 1800s uh, as track inspection vehicles. Track inspector or not, I thought it was pretty cool. So when I run away, I'm gonna grab one of these things and just travel the rails on my own. Yeah, just be careful, my you know, the train's not coming. Oh yeah. That <laughs> in addition to the trolley cars, we actually have a little known secret here. We have an antique fire truck museum. Also, we have um, a bus museum, and that's included with your admission. And how about a little music as you look around? That's right, there's even a player piano. With admission at only $8.50 for adults and $5.50 for children, having a great day won't break the bank. On this day, my tour ended at what turned out to be my favorite trolley the museum has to offer. All right, well, next up we have car number 16 right here. This is from Springfield, Vermont. Uh, it ran for the Springfield Electric and then the Springfield Terminal Railway. Now, they used to call that line the Tunerville, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they converted that into a rail trail recently. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I go out with my dog all the time. I had no idea that they still had equipment from it. Well, see, this is actually here, and you can ride it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you want to go? I'd love to. All right. Let's not forget, included in your admission is unlimited trolley rides for the day on any number of their operational cars. Traveling a three-mile round-trip route along a segment of the former Hartford and Springfield Street Railway, riders can enjoy the sights and sounds of a fully restored trolley car. Looking for a little more adventure? For only 55 bucks and a quick operations course, you too can even drive one of these trolleys. Never would I have thought I'd be operating a piece of history. Doesn't get much cooler than this. Hey, do these tracks lead to the land of make believe? They do. <laughs> well, girl, they didn't lead to the land of make believe, but it was a really great experience. One that anyone who has the ability should definitely try for themselves. The first trolley was a horse-drawn tram, which ran on the Swansea and Mumbles Railway in South Wales, UK, in 1807. 